Hi everyone, my name is Chantelle and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a collaboration with my friend Sarah, also known as Scribblefix. Check out her work, her art is very colorful. She does Funko Pop makeovers, paints on game console controllers and everything in between. For this collaboration, we both got a book box that we can get at Bunnings, which is a hardware store in Australia. We left it open for us to use whatever art materials and there is no prompt. I know she is potentially doing something dragon related, so please check out her video, which will be linked in the description box below. If you've been around on my channel for a while, you know that I like the darker side of things. And for today's project, that is no exception. I decided to go with an Alice Madness Returns theme for this book box. I am starting off by creating a keyhole in the front cover of the book. This is one of the key elements of the game as Alice will shrink and grow and goes through to the other parts of a level through tiny keyholes. For the inside or the right hand side of the inside, I'll be using some modeling paste and styrofoam to build up the main structure. The backdrop will have some of these chipboard pipes and I'll also be adding some lights. It's going to be a dissection of Alice falling down the rabbit hole. In the game, it's only a 10 second fall down the rabbit hole and it's very dark, filled with cogs, faces and pipes. First, I build up two layers of styrofoam on both sides. I'm roughing up the top of the styrofoam to make it look more like soil. You can do this with any blunt object. In my case, I used something that was close by, which was the screwdriver I used earlier. Make sure you have anti-static spray ready. This will prevent the styrofoam flyaway sticking to everything. Now, when you work with lights in a diorama, this is one of the earlier steps you have to take. So I'm going to draw a hole in the base of the diorama, basically where the book box is sitting on top of when displayed. Once everything is painted, you won't see the battery pack, but you can still change out the batteries without having to take half of the diorama apart. After drilling the hole, I string the lights through and glue the battery pack in place. You can see here I am wrapping red tissue paper around the lights, however I have to scrape it off later as the lights were not bright enough. After positioning the foam I'm going to glue all the parts down with hot glue, trapping the lights in between the two layers of foam. Then with the modeling paste I'm going over the entire surface of the inside of the book to make it look less like styrofoam and more like soil. Paint doesn't really want to stick to styrofoam so the modeling paste will add texture and a good paint surface. Whilst the modeling paste is still wet I'm adding some coarse grit sand to the back of the diorama and to some parts of the styrofoam for a change in texture. Once that is dry, I'm adding the chipboard pieces into the background of the diorama, gluing them down with wood glue. After some more drying time, I'm going in with black and brown acrylic paints to tie everything together and build up the details. Once everything is covered and dry, I'm going to highlight the chipboard pipes with some metallic acrylic paint. In the game you come across dice and domino game pieces and I happen to have an old domino set that I got at a garage sale years ago. I think I paid $2 for the set and I bought some dice especially for this diorama. Because I built up the layers of styrofoam I can use that to put the dominoes in between and layer the pieces inside the diorama for more depth and perspective. With some pink bendy straws, I'm going to make more pipes that are more in the foreground of the diorama. I'm cutting them to size, glue them in place with hot glue and paint them black with a metallic top layer.
In the game, when Alice lands in the Mad Hatter's domain, there are many steampunk elements. The diorama I'm creating here reminds me of that part of the game, and of course I had to add some metal cogs and gears as well. I didn't want to sculpt a tiny Alice falling down the rabbit hole at first, but then I thought, well, I can't really leave that out now, can I? So here I am sculpting a little Alice. Also, the faces you see in the background are based on one of the main enemies in the game, called Insidious Ruins. The faces of the Insidious Ruins are white with black eyes, nose and mouth. After painting them and Alice, I'm gluing them into the diorama with hot glue. I am now going to work on the slightly lighter left side of the inside of the book box. I've mixed some liquid Sculpey with alcohol ink and I'm putting it into this little glass bottle. I am creating most of the elements for the left side of the inside of the book box from polymer clay. I love working with this medium and I can shape it and paint it any way I want. I am creating the shell-like shapes that Alice can smash in the game to collect teeth which can be used to upgrade weapons. Before moving on to all the elements that will be on this side of the book, I'm going to prep the surface by roughing it up with a craft knife and cover it with liquid Sculpey just to make sure that the clay will stick to the surface. I rolled out a large sheet of clay for the backdrop and I'm going to be creating a checkered background which I will eventually paint black and white. I'm using a ruler to evenly space out the tiles and I'm using a skewer to press in the marks. I've also made the teeth that you collect in the game that I'm going to use for this diorama. I think they look pretty realistic. And then it's time to assemble the left side of the inside of the book. Now that's all cured in the oven, I can start painting. For painting polymer clay pieces, I like to use miniature paints. They are self-leveling and the paint is often very opaque, which means that you need less. I'm starting by painting the entire background, the faces and the teeth white. I then go in with the black for the eyes of the insidious runes and the checkered background. The teeth needed to be a little bit more yellow and I'm applying that same color of ivory to the shells as a base layer.
I have given them a layer of light orange brown and go in with a slightly darker shade for shading and finally highlights. I'm going over the entire piece with a strong tone wash to give it more of a grungy look and to easily add shading. And of course we have to add some blood to this diorama. I love effect miniature paints by Green Stuff World. To tie everything together I'm painting the remaining visible wood black. With silver paint I'm going to paint the side where we are supposed to have book pages in silver. Then again with the strong tone wash I'm going over it to tone it down. Last but certainly not least is the cover of the book box. The Cheshire Cat is a very iconic character in all Alice stories, but this one in the game is definitely different. So I decided to sculpt his head to go on the cover of the book box. I ran out of tin foil, so I scrunched up some paper and wrapped it with painter's tape as a base. Before putting the first layer of clay on, I am applying liquid Sculpey to the surface of the tape to make the Sculpey adhere. I rolled out a sheet of Sculpey Original in a pasta machine on the thickest setting and wrapped that around the paper ball. I am then placing the eyeballs and the eyebrows on the face and blend everything in to make it part of the face. I then move on to sculpting the bridge of the nose and the nose itself before moving on to the muzzle and his weird wicked grin and teeth. After cutting out his bat wing shaped ears, I'm attaching them to the head. And now it's time to bake him. I had to add the Vorpal blade as well, so I've sketched it out and transferred the graphite onto the clay. I then cut the Vorpal blade out of the clay and decorated it with swirls and dots. Once the Cheshire Cat is cooled down, it is time to paint him. Let me know in the comments down below, what is your favorite character from the Alice universe? It doesn't have to be Alice Madness Returns, this can also be from the classic Alice novel by Lewis Carroll.
I am tracing the chaos symbol onto the box with white graphite paper and then paint the design silver. I do the same with the symbols that can be found on her dress and the necklace she wears, which I've put on the spine of the book. Now let's have a look at the final diorama. And this is it for my first book box diorama. It was a lot of fun to work on and I'll definitely do it again if most of you like this kind of projects too. There are so many possibilities. I want to thank Scribblefix for collaborating with me. Please make sure to head over to her channel to find out what she created. If you would like to support me, you can do so by signing up for my Patreon. You can find the link in the end card of this video or in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome! Please don't forget you can click the subscribe button to become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!